Hello class, this is the second part of the video where we're going to be looking at precedence tables but in this video we're mainly going to be concentrating on dummy activities. So the learning intention of this video is for us to develop an understanding of what a dummy activity is and for us to learn how to construct an activity network with dummy activities. Let's explore the concept of a dummy activity. We define a dummy activity as an imaginary edge or an imaginary activity where we must include in the network diagram when two activities share some, but not all of their immediate predecessors. And because it's an imaginary edge, we need to represent this with dotted lines. To understand what a dummy activity looks like and why it's used, let's try to draw the activity network for this particular precedence table. So if you look at the precedence table down below, we can see that we can start off with activities A and B because they've got no immediate predecessors. So I'm going to draw my starting vertex like this, and I'm going to draw two edges which divert away from the starting vertex labeled A and B. In order for me to initiate activity C, I need to complete activity B in advance. So I'm going to draw a vertex to show that activity B has been completed, and now I'm going to draw an edge moving away from it to show that I can now commence activity C. In order to move to the next stage of the project, I need to complete activities A and C in advance in order for me to move on to activity D. So therefore, I'm going to make them converge into a singular point and then I could draw activity D branching out from that vertex. Now, I understand that when we draw an activity network, we like to represent them using straight lines instead of curved lines. But let's ignore that for now so that I could demonstrate to you guys why a dummy activity is necessary for these types of examples. So for activity E, it says that I need to have completed activity A in advance. So you'd think that in this case over here, I would draw a edge coming from that vertex because that would signify I've completed activities A and so therefore that's going to be edge E in this case. However, if you've done this, this is actually incorrect because if you look closely in your precedence table, it clearly states that activity A is the only predecessor for activity E. However, in the network diagram that you've just drawn, it shows that activity E has the predecessors A as well as C. As a result of this, this is actually incorrect because this does not match our precedence table whatsoever. As a result of this, we need to draw a dummy activity because in this case over here, you've got an example where you've got two activities which share some but not all of their immediate predecessors. So on the right hand side, I have redrawn my network diagram using straight edges this time and I've partially labelled some of the edges already in the project. To illustrate my dummy activity, remember I'm going to be using dotted lines and I'm going to do so like this. Notice over here that I do not need to label my dummy activity at all because we know that it's going to be represented by a dotted line. By drawing my dummy activity in this particular manner, I have resolved the issue that I had originally with my first network. So if you look at this network over here, notice that for activity E, it says that the predecessors of it are A and C, but that's not the case at all as stated by the table. If you now look at our network diagram, for activity E, it only has the predecessor of A. It does not depend on C whatsoever. So this is how you correctly draw the activity network using a dummy activity. I can now draw activity F in my network diagram. So to do this, I need to complete activity D. So from this vertex over here, I'm going to draw an edge moving away from it and label that as activity F. And if you look at your precedence table, notice how both of these activities are not the immediate predecessors of any other activity. So what that means is that these two activities will therefore converge to your final vertex. So I'm just going to simply extend these lines until they meet and then draw a vertex to label that as my finishing vertex. Now that you understand why dummy activities are needed for certain activity networks, let's now look into a bit more detail as to how do we draw the dummy activity. So to draw the dummy activity, we need to draw it from the end of the shared immediate predecessor to the start of the activity that has additional immediate predecessors. So let's use this as an example. In this example, we can see that we could start with three activities because it doesn't have any immediate predecessors. So I'm gonna draw my starting vertex like this and have three edges branching out from it labeled as A, B, and C. If you examine the bottom half of the precedence table, notice how both activities D and E share some immediate predecessors, but not all. In this case, they share the same predecessor, which is B in this case. So this tells me that I do need to draw a dummy activity for this network. Before I do that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to draw activity D coming out 
from activity A and draw activity E coming out from activity C. So something like this over here. If you look at our current activity network, we can see that D only has a predecessor of A, but I need to somehow include B to it. The way that we do this is we're going to draw a dummy activity and we'll do this by drawing an edge from the end of the shared immediate predecessor. So in this case over here, B is the shared immediate predecessor to the start of the activity that has additional immediate predecessors. So D in this case has the additional immediate predecessor, which is A. So I'm gonna draw a vertex at the end of edge B. So now I'm going to draw a dotted line as my dummy activity going from B to the start of activity D. So the start of that is essentially the end of activity A. Similarly, I'm also going to need to draw another dummy activity. So this time around, I'm going to draw a dummy activity going from B to the start of activity E, or another way to think of it is drawing a dummy activity starting from B to the end of activity C. So it should therefore look like this going downwards. Now that I've completed this, all that's left for me to do is to now complete the rest of my activity network. So if we analyze our precedence table, notice that activities D and E are not the immediate predecessors of any other vertex. So we're just going to connect these two edges to the finishing vertex. So it should look like this over here. Please recall that we shouldn't really have any curved lines at all for our activity network. So I'm just gonna redraw this using straight lines. So therefore this is going to be our answer. Let's look at one more final example. According to our precedence table, we could start from two activities, A and B. So I'm gonna draw a starting vertex and I have two edges branching out from it labeled as A and B. Once I have completed activity A, I can move on with activity C. So I've drawn a vertex over here to show that A has been completed and now I'm going to draw an edge moving away and label that as activity C. Once activity B has been completed, I can move on to activity D. So I'm gonna draw a vertex like this and draw an edge moving away from it as well. If you examine the next two rows of our precedence table, notice that for both activities E and F, they share some immediate predecessors, but not all. So this just tells me that again, I'm going to need to draw a dummy activity. Before I do this, what I'll do is I'm going to draw an edge connecting between E to D, as well as F to C. So therefore my diagram now looks like this, and now I need to start drawing my dummy activity. So again, you draw the dummy activity from the end of the shared immediate predecessor to the start of the activity that has additional immediate predecessor. So in our example over here, since activity C is the shared immediate predecessor, I'm going to start it from C. So I'm gonna start it from this vertex over here. And what I'll do is I'm going to now draw an edge moving from this vertex over here to the activity that has extra immediate predecessor. So the activity that has extra immediate predecessor is going to be activity E. So I'm gonna draw a vertical line going downwards like so. Once we have completed both activities E and F, it says that we could then move on to activity G. So I'm going to converge these two edges over here and then draw an extra edge coming out from it to say that we could now start with activity G. Since activity G is not an immediate predecessor for any other activities, this just means that it will therefore link up to the finishing vertex. So I'm gonna draw it like this. Since our diagram has curved edges, I'm going to now redraw this using straight lines. So therefore my answer should look like this in the end. By now, it is my hope that you are able to now draw dummy activities in your activity network. What I'd like you to do now is to complete all the remaining questions from exercise 15C to get further practice. This is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again in the next one. Bye.